my fellow kaiju enthusiasts. Today I'll be looking at the King of the Monsters himself, rendered by no other than Haya Toys as shown in the King of the Monsters and the Heat Ray version from Godzilla vs Kong. To start off with, the King of the Monsters version himself. When looking at Godzilla here, it is evident that Haya Toys listened to the criticisms of their original release and fixed the issues like a champ, as the head sculpt that used to be screen accurate but flat regarding details are nowhere to be seen. Instead, we have this crocodilian hide in which all the wrinkles and details seen in either the film or in real life animals are portrayed, in which it adds an extra layer of authenticity to the figure and blows the Godzilla vs Kong Godzilla out of the park. This is in addition to the jaw which was a legit criticism I pointed out in my previous review in which the joint was explicitly seen in the jaw that semi ruined the authenticity of the figure and made it look somewhat cheap. The current iteration lacks such exposed joints and is instead provided with a thick jawline that looks like it's capable of biting through Eren's limbs and oozes Giga Chad energy. And the awkward gap in the neck seen in the original iteration has also been remedied as Hyatt Toys added an extra piece to make the neck seamless and accurate to the big G depicted in the film. The only downside is that the excess piece limits the angle that Godzilla can look up, so a direct 180 anti-aircraft fire is nigh with this version, but with the absence of an atomic breath effect, the sacrifice is worth it. When moving to the Big G's vital area, it is obvious that my boy's been bulking as the enormous body mass as to Godzilla's alpha male status that it makes Giga Chats like Eren Yeager look like anchovies in comparison, and looking side Side by side to the original legendary Goji, it's more or less the same, slightly bulkier though. But a major differentiating factor is the added details such as the further highlighted lines and scales, alongside the lighter olive drab paint job, dare I say it, more white. I don't want peace, I want problems always. Similar to the Big G's transformation in the film, as he was hardly visible in the first film and became subsequently visible with each sequel. An additional differentiation are the dorsal plates, as firstly, unlike the Godzilla vs Kong version, this iteration is brighter with the highlighted olive drab color scheme, alongside the excess details regarding the lines and crevices similar to the body, but the decisive factor is the size, or to be exact, proportions to that of the body in which the King of the Monsters version possesses a larger set of dorsal plates compared to the original figure, adding to a more intimidating look. This is in addition to the fact that the plates can be used as a melee weapon. Such mass requires a foundation which is capable of supporting the immense weight in which the legendary Goji is well equipped and even renowned for with his <laughs> legs. And the feet with the elongated claws in combination allows the big G to kick, stomp, and pulverize hostiles from Harambe to the Little Mermaid. And we can't discuss about Godzilla without talking about the enormous and powerful tail, as the long and thick area not only increases the mass, but with enough kinetic force that can provide for any unforgettable <laughs> experience. What the fuck did I just say? But with enough kinetic force that the tail can be lethal as it can push back larger kaijus but to lesser threats is a death sentence. When observing what the big G is accompanied by... My disappointment is immeasurable. And my day is ruined. The original release also came with no accessories, so did you really expect anything else? If you've seen the previous High Toys Godzilla, whose ability was while not equivalent to SH Monster Arts, was pretty damn near. So I expect no less from this iteration of the Big G. Due to the modifications regarding the neck sculpt, head and neck movement is limited. The jaw movement is decent, alongside there being a tongue movement, making the Big G a better kisser than men, women, and children. Our movement, while more stiff than the Godzilla vs Kong version, is still capable of a full 360. The elbows can bend about 90 degrees alongside left and right. And movement is decent. The waist can turn at a better range than most anime figures, but I 
I don't want to damage the Godzilla, alongside the fact that Godzilla never twists his waist. So, there's no reason to twist the Big G to such extent. Leg movement is pretty flexible. Due to the density of the Big G, the knees can bend only up to 90 degrees, a cast swivel, almost statue-esque feet movement. And while the tail movement is impressive, but due to the stiff nature of the figure, it's nowhere to come about. Here we are at last! Hyatt Toys has once again released another banger as their iteration of the King of the Monsters version of Godzilla is, in my opinion, a work of art as the sculpt is screen accurate to the extent that it puts other iterations of the 2019 legendary Goji to shame. But the biggest factor are the compensations regarding the issues that plague the original Hyatt Toys release as the exposed jaw joint and the literal open neck have been alleviated, making this the best version of an articulated legendary goji in the market as of now. The only gripe regarding the figure is the lack of accessories, but considering the price, which is acceptable, so I would recommend the Camp the Monsters Godzilla over here and give it a ranking of an A. And then we have the Godzilla vs Kong Heat Ray Godzilla, which is basically the previous figure but with a blue glow. In order to release an additional Godzilla figure when he's spamming the atomic breath. So looking closely, the sculpt is basically identical to the King of the Monsters version, which is ironic as I expected it to be more akin to the Godzilla vs Kong version as depicted on the box. So disregarding the sculpt, as I explained previously, and is identical to the 2019 version, I'd like to focus on the blue paint job which is usually portrayed when the big G is spamming his special ability and post 2019 spreads across the entire body. Looking inside the mouth, it is your plain, still blue paint job, unlike the translucent blue portrayed in the SH Monsters version, in which it is a slight disappointment but the distinction between the teeth and the rest of the jaw is clear and way better than the SH Monsters Godzilla vs Kong version of the big G. The same can also be said about the eyes, as the eye line and the rest of the face still retains the accurate details even with the blue paint job. And moving down, the neck and abdomen are beautifully colored alongside being naturally blended, as the paint job here possesses a shiny metallic paint job and doesn't overlay the sculpt on such components. But the best part regarding the paint job are the dorsal plates, as the still and bland paint job stops on the neck and in its place the metallic paint job is applied. This is in addition to the combination of three separate colors organically blended onto the plates, as the core of the plates are colored in white, with the middle section covered in your average blue and ending in a dark metallic blue, portraying the true power of the King of the Monsters. But moving to the plates located on the tail, it's your average stale blue paint job, which gives me flashbacks to another figure. However, unlike the King of the Monsters version of Godzilla, the heat ray version here comes with accessories. Shocker! First are your excess head and neck parts in which by removing the head and neck and then replacing them with the additional parts, you have Godzilla facing the sky in order to recreate the famous scene in the King of the Monsters, denying the fact that the big G here is from Godzilla vs Kong. And you have this atomic breath effect piece which similar to the SH Monsters variant is composed of a translucent plastic in which you can clearly see a plastic pole shoved inside. And rather than the bursting effect of the monster, Starts, the Hyatt Toys version has a spiraling effect which ends with the same splash shape when impacting on target. The only downside regarding the effect is that there are no 3mm holes on the effect unlike Bandai's which makes it difficult to place. And the beginning of the effect piece in which the pot is curved at 45 degrees and when shoving the piece in Godzilla's mouth makes it impossible for Godzilla to fire straight at a surface level target but even with such faults when reenacting the iconic shot, it is perfectly portrayed from the direction and angle of the beam to Godzilla able to portray the exact pose. When regarding size, Godzilla here and the 2019 version happen to tower above most figures and stand toe to toe with bigger kaijus and mechs. This is due to the fact that the big G here is 17.78 centimeters or 7 inches tall. Here's both the 2019 Godzilla and the heat ray version next to Gunpla. Kaiju figures, SH figures, Figmas, and Gojira, Godzilla, Godzilla, 
Godzilla, Godzilla, and Godzilla. So, what is there left to say? The heat ray version of the Big G is another fantastic addition, most probably due to sharing the identical sculpt to the King of the Monsters variant. But the extra blue finish is impressive, minus a particular pot, and accessories are pretty good and add to the figure when depicting certain poses in the film. But certain paint finishes are mediocre to say the least, in which I would prefer the normal King of the Monsters version over the heat ray version. But if you have enough disposal income to spend, I would recommend the heat ray version, but if not, get the King of the Monsters version. In doing so, I would give the heat ray version of Godzilla a ranking of an A.